So I'm here once again at Six Flags Magic Mountain, and I wanted to come back to do another video to show you some of the, uh, the forgotten relics that are still hidden around the park. There's some things, uh, old parts of rides, and I'll show you, but there's some stuff hidden around the park that people don't even know are there. So I'm gonna show you some of that today. And I think I'll probably come back one more time in October to make a fourth video to, uh, to make memories of Fright Fest, to share some of my memories of Fright Fest and talk about the history of Six Flags Fright Fest. But today, let's head inside and take a look at some of those hidden relics. Let's go see what we can find. All right, so we just got into the park and the first thing is actually right here in the front of the park. And I just found out about this recently. I had no idea. This building right over here is the guest relations building. And I didn't know that back in the day, this used to be a bank. And there's still a couple of things on this building that shows you that it used to be a bank. And again, I had no idea. I've walked by it, you know, thousands of times and never noticed the after hours drop box right here in front. And you would think that after all these years, they would cover it up, but for some reason it's still here. And what's even stranger is if you come on the side of the building and look up, it says right there, bank burglar alarm. Crazy that that's still there all these years later, but right there in plain sight. And as we make our way into the park, we pass by this gift shop and if you're someone that grew up coming to Six Flags, then the odds are you used to cut through this gift shop every time you came in and out of the park just to get a few seconds of air conditioning. And while we're in the area, I have to mention again, on the other side of these walls was the entrance to Flashback. Now, I feel like this entire area is a relic. You got the Logjammer building on the left, Mooseburger Lodge straight ahead, and the old Flashback buildings on the right but that's actually not what I'm here to talk about. What I wanna talk about is right over here behind Mooseburger Lodge. So right here behind Mooseburger Lodge, this used to be one of three monorail stations and it sat here for many years abandoned and they finally tore it down and built this smoking area. So unfortunately there's nothing left to see, but who remembers when the monorail station was here? So we're now in Bugs Bunny World and this area is awesome right now. There is absolutely nobody in this area. And the next forgotten relic that I'm gonna show you is right over here to the right of these giant carrots. And it's actually something that's in the backstage area. It used to be part of the park, but then they just put up a fence and made it uh, part of the backstage area. And you can already kind of see it peeking over the fence. And boom, there it is, a giant purple castle. And why is there a giant purple castle in the backstage area? Well, because back in the 70s, Magic Mountain didn't have Looney Tunes as their mascot. They had King Troll, and there was trolls and a wizard, and this castle was part of the whole troll and wizard theming. And then I guess once they got rid of that mascot, they didn't have a use for this castle anymore, so they just put up a wall and they made this part of the backstage area. And of course, I would love to go backstage and explore the castle close up. It really bums me out that I never checked it out when I worked here at the park. And you can see right here is an entrance to the backstage area. I could just run back there really quick and check things out. Man, I can see from here that the castle is covered in spider webs. Let me go over to the other side so we can get a different view. So how many of you have walked right by this castle and never noticed it? And how many of you remember when this castle was still in use? I still can't believe that all these years later, it's still standing, but they just do nothing with it. So I mentioned these giant carrots just a moment ago, and they're part of the Carrot Club Theater, and I don't even think they use this theater anymore. You can see it's dressed up right now for a show, but I don't know when the last time was I saw a show going on here. I think this theater's just been abandoned for a really long time, but this was not always the Carrot Club Theater. Back in the 90s, I remember this as the Animals in Action Theater. And if you come around to the side of the theater and look on the wall, there it is, Animals in Action. It's still on the wall. For some reason, they've never painted over it. And it was a long time ago that Magic Mountain got rid of all the animals in the park because it wasn't humane to have the animals. And that's when they got rid of the Animals in Action Theater. And since we're here in Bugs Bunny World, I wanted to stop real quick and get a closer look at Snack Shack. 
I mentioned before that I used to work here and it looks like nobody's inside right now. So I wanted to stop for a minute and reminisce. So those are probably not the same icy machines that I used to use. And we definitely didn't have churros or pretzels or anything like that. It was just ices. But it was right here on this section of counter that I used to lean up against all day drawing on receipt paper. Man, this brings back memories. They should put a plaque here to commemorate all the hard work that I did. So I mentioned before that this area used to be called Pirate's Cove. And right here is where the Pirate's Cove sign was. And I wanted to just take a minute to talk about this area because I kind of rushed through it in my last video. And right over here is the bathroom that I used to send everybody to when I worked at the pretzel cart, Fort Le John. And I actually didn't realize that this bathroom still had the pirate theme going on. You'll notice up on each corner, there's a cannon. And how many of you have walked right by this bathroom and never noticed those cannons? Now, right over here where Goliath now is, this used to be where the Jolly Roger was, another uh, pirate themed ride. And then right across the way, they still have the Buccaneer and Swashbuckler, more of that pirate theming. And then you'll see on the exit over here, there's a Pelican. So yeah, this whole area was pirate themed, but I think a lot of people walk right through here and they don't even realize that there's a pirate theme going on because this area is so small, it doesn't seem like a land or anything. And it looks like the new DC universe is now open, what used to be Gotham City, and this view in front of us looks a lot better than the last time we were here. Still looks a little weird, but better than the last time when it was you know, blocked off by that wall. So let's head over and check out this new area. So I had to stop for a minute and check this out because it looks like the drop of doom is about to fall. And I think that's what it's called. But this is the ride that they put on the side of Superman. And yep, there it goes. No, I'm good. Oh, and at the same time, we get Superman going up. That's cool. Yeah, I used to love riding Superman. I haven't ridden that in a while, but I'll definitely pass on that drop of doom. And here we are, the new DC Universe. I see they changed the front entrance and it looks like they kept that first ride when you first walk in. It used to be called Gearworks and then they changed it to uh, Wonder Woman Golden Lasso of Truth. And I don't know what it's called now. It doesn't appear to have a sign, but I'm pretty sure it's Teen Titans themed and they just kind of keep re-theming this ride. And right over here is where the Batmobile used to be, but there's nothing here now. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This area is kind of empty. There's not really a lot going on. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of people in here either, and that part's cool, but uh, right over here is where all those comic book looking buildings used to be, and maybe those are still going to be there. It looks like they're still working on them, but yeah, just seems like there's not, not a lot going on in this area. Of course, right over here, this is the brand new Wonder Woman roller coaster. So let's stop and check it out because it looks like it's just about to go over that first drop. It's kind of hard to see because it's off in the distance, but I think it's going to be coming our way here in a second. Yeah, here it comes. Yeah, I don't know. It looks pretty cool. Uh, of course, in the back, they still have the Batman ride. Thankfully, they didn't get rid of that. And they still have the Batmobile. They moved it to the front of the ride, but I have no idea what version of the Batmobile this is. So our next hidden relic is right over here behind what used to be the Carousel Grill. It's now Johnny Rockets. We got to go into this fenced off area. I guess this is because they now serve alcohol, which seems like a good idea for Magic Mountain. So if we come right back here behind the building and then we look up here, that's one of the original pieces of the monorail track. And there used to be pieces of the monorail track hidden all around the park, but I think this is the last remaining piece and it's just chilling here in the trees. A lot of people have no idea that this is here. I think if you were on Superman and you looked quick enough, you'd be able to see it because, oh, there goes Superman right there. The Superman track is just on the other side of this. And this piece of monorail track used to go right over here to where uh, the second monorail station used to be. It's now that newer ride, Crazanity. So let's go over there and take a look at that right now. So right over there is where that piece of track was. And then right over here is this newer ride, I believe it's called Crazanity. And then right behind this is where that second monorail station used to be. Uh, and again, that monorail station sat here abandoned for many years. And then they finally decided to tear it out and put in this ride. And just across from where that monorail station was, I showed you this last time, this was Tidal Wave. It was recently torn down. 
so they could build that Wonder Woman ride. This was the entrance to Tidal Wave. And then just beyond that, I forgot to mention this last time, this is now a barbecue restaurant. But in the 90s, I remember this being Eduardo's Grill and it was a Mexican food restaurant. And I used to like coming here and getting tostadas. They were really good. They, they probably weren't that good, but I remember liking them at the time. And then right across from where Eduardo's Grill used to be, you'll find, wait, when did they change this to the Jammin' Bumpers? This used to be called the Sand Blaster. Now it's the Jammin' Bumpers. Anyways, uh, right next to where the Jammin' Bumper bumper cars are, you'll find the Scrambler. And this is not the original location of the Scrambler. They've moved it a couple of times, but you'll recognize this ride from uh, the movie Vacation. Now right over there is where Spin Out was, and we're going to go take a look at that in a second. But I just noticed this little food shack is now called the Cheetos Popcorn Mix. And I have no idea what that is, but they've got a Chester Cheetah out there, and that's kind of nostalgic, so that's cool. But just behind that Cheeto shack is this giant gazebo. And do any of you know what this is? I walked by this for so many years having no idea what it was. I just always assumed it was an old eating area that they no longer used. But what this actually is, it was the station for a ride that hasn't existed since the early 80s. It was called the Dragon, and they were dragon cars that would take you up and down the hill. And I believe this was here from 1974 to 1981. And I can't believe that this has just been sitting here unused since 1981. I would love to take you inside and show you what it looks like, but there's no way to get inside. You can see there's a walkway that goes from Ninja into the gazebo, and I think that's the only way that you can get in there. But you can see more from on top of the hill, and I'll show you that when we get up there. Now, as you're walking up the hill to Samurai Summit, you see the sign right there. Just as you pass the Samurai Summit sign, you turn onto this little path and follow it back here. And I just, I can't believe that these paths are just open for guests to walk on and they can just, I can just go right behind this fence. It's just crazy that Magic Mountain doesn't try and, you know, close these things off. But if you take this path back here, this is where Spin Out used to be. And right over there, that's the backside of the station from the Dragon Cars. But yeah, this is where Spin Out was. Now we're going to head up to Samurai Summit in just a minute. But first I wanted to point this out. Last time I talked about how this used to be where the uh, Batman stunt show was. And before that, it was the Police Academy stunt show. And I'm sure it was a lot of other shows before that as well. But one thing I forgot to mention is if you walk right over here, there's still a couple of relics hanging around from that theater. Now, I believe this is where the exit to the theater was. And if you look right back here behind these walls, there's a couple of pillars from that exit. You can see that one right there. And then if we look through these two walls, you can see another one of the pillars. Now, let, let me zoom in so you can get a better look. So yep, a couple of relics from the theater just sitting back here behind this wall. People walk by and don't even notice. And this is right next to Dive Devil. So next time you're walking by, take a look. Now I know I mentioned Apocalypse last time and how this used to be Terminator. And then before that, this is where Cyclone was. And this is also where the bobsleds were. But what I forgot to mention is this is where Shockwave used to be. And Shockwave was one of the first stand-up roller coasters. I know they now have Riddler's Revenge, but long before Riddler's Revenge, they had Shockwave, and that used to sit right here where Apocalypse now is. And right across from Apocalypse, they're already getting ready for Fright Fest, which is kind of funny because it's like 180 degrees out right now, but I guess it's never too early for Halloween. Okay, we're finally making our way to Samurai Summit. We're walking up this awful hill, and the next hidden relic I want to show you is right up these steps. Well, actually, it's right on the other side of this post. It's that tunnel. But you know what? Let's go up the steps. We can get a better view from up there. So there's now a chain link fence to stop people from going over there. But you can see there used to actually be a path and just a short gate that they could use when they wanted to close off this area. And that's because this tunnel used to actually be the third station for the monorail. Now, it's now part of Full Throttle, which is one of the newer roller coasters and also the roller coaster that replaced uh, Log Jammer. But so, yeah, this tunnel is now part of Full Throttle. But back in the day, this is the tunnel that you would come into if you wanted to catch the monorail when you were up here in Samurai Summit. And here comes Full Throttle now, so we'll get to see this tunnel in action. Three, two, one. Enjoy the 
So if you stop about halfway up the hill, you get a really cool view of the backside of the park, but there's actually more to be seen from up here. So from up here, you can look straight into that lower station of the Dragon Ride. And I don't know if my camera is gonna be able to pick this up, but you can actually see some of the old track along with the line queue. Now, of course, there was an upper station as well, and that's where the Ninja Station now is. And if you look in the Ninja Station, you can still see a giant turntable on the floor that they use to spin the track on the Dragon Ride. Now, what's even cooler is if we look over here, and again, I'm hoping my camera is gonna be able to pick this up, you can still see some of the track from the Dragon on the hill. I'm gonna adjust the lighting here so you can see it better. Now, there it is right in front of us. You can see that section of track that was part of the Dragon Ride. It would have took you from that lower station up to where the Ninja Station now is. And again, I can't believe that these pieces of track have just been out here since the early 80s. Wow. And you can see how this would have led right down there to that lower station. So as we continue up the hill, we find even more abandoned buildings, starting with this one right in front of me. This used to be the Laughing Dragon Pizza Company. I think it was a couple other restaurants as well, but I always knew it as the Laughing Dragon Pizza Company. Now for a while, I know they were using this for Fright Fest. They had something called like Dinner with the Monsters or something, where you would come here and have dinner, and then some of the monsters would come and sit with you while you were eating. Uh, luckily, I always found ways to get out of participating in that. But yeah, right here next to Superman was the Laughing Dragon Pizza Company. And if we look over the fence, you can see back here, it's all just kind of falling apart because it's just been sitting here abandoned for years. And what a waste. And then heading back the other way, uh, right in front of us, we have this building that I don't think they use anymore either. This was originally the gift shop for Superman. And then I think it just became a uh, just a normal gift shop. But I haven't seen it open for a really long time. I don't even know if they still use it. Now, the next abandoned building that I'm going to show you is right up these stairs over here. So if we walk up these stairs, we're going to see this giant abandoned building that I'm sure you have walked by tons of times not knowing what it was, especially if you've used these bathrooms over here. And I know because I used to use these bathrooms all the time when I was uh, working at Fright Fest up here. And I had no idea that this was the building for Eagle's Flight, which was the sky bucket ride that would take you from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill and vice versa. And that was here, I believe, until the mid 90s. And then ever since, this has just been an abandoned building. Uh, they do use it during Fright Fest. You can see right now they're uh, turning it into one of the mazes. And other than that, this just sits here unused. And again, people walk by it all the time, having no idea what it was. And then just up the hill a little bit, we find another people mover to take you up and down the hill. Uh, this used to be called the Orient Express. It's gone by a lot of names over the years. I think it was recently called like the uh, Helpful Honda Mover or something like that. And it's recently been changed to just the Magic Mover. And it's got a bit of a retro vibe going on, which is really cool. Now, right across from the Magic Mover, right next to Ninja, we have another building that most of the year just sits here abandoned. During Fright Fest, this has turned into Willoughby's Haunted Mansion, but for the rest of the year, it just sits here unused. But from 1974 to 1984, this was the Magic Pagoda, and it was a Chinese-themed walkthrough, and there was a snack shop, and that's why on top of the building, there's some outdoor seating. I'm gonna try and take you up there right now. Let's see, if we walk up here, to the top you can see that there's still a bunch of outdoor seating here that's just sitting here going to waste you can't get up here they have a wall that stops you from getting up here but i don't know why they don't clean up these tables and use this as an eating area like there's a really nice view of the park and this is just sitting up here going to waste it's really a shame there's seating on either sides here and it's just it's going to waste now, I don't know that I would consider this hidden, but I think a lot of people probably do walk by and don't realize it's here. This is the picnic area, and this is, uh, you know, where they have company picnics and stuff like that. So just thought I'd point that out because a lot of people probably don't even realize it's there. Now, as we exit the park, I wanted to point out this building really quick. Back in the day, this was the place to come whenever we would come to Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is where we would stop to get a funnel cake and a hot chocolate, which sounds like way too much now, but back then, that's how I used to like to do it. And the funnel cakes still smell amazing and they look amazing. So if you visit Six Flags, you might want to stop here and grab yourself a funnel cake. Well, that's going to do it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.